Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where science and spirit are the focus of creating your most fertile life. You'll find a beautiful balance of grounded science-based topics as well as spiritual talk and how they are both important for moving toward optimal fertility. Empower yourself along with me. I'm your host, Dr. Maria Rothenberger, a fellow fertility friend, therapist, coach, best-selling author, and spirit baby intuitive. Let's get started. Let's get started indeed. This is Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host for the podcast. I hope you like the new intro. It's been a long time, man. I've been doing this podcast for five years, I think, and I have never changed the intro. I thought it was about time, don't you? Also, you know, podcasts evolve over time. And in in the beginning, when I first started doing this podcast, it was very mental health science based and I've only since 2020 come out as a spirit baby intuitive and started really talking about far more spiritual topics, pulling them a lot more into my work. And so why not change the intro to reflect that, right? (laughs) So speaking of which, today we are talking about past lives and spirit baby realm because I got a beautiful email from somebody asking questions about that that I thought, Yeah, there's a puppy in the background there. I think he's mad that I'm paying attention to you and not him. You know how pups are. So anyway, I got a great email from somebody asking these questions and I thought, well, shoot, I haven't done a podcast specifically on that. So why not tackle that? So let's do that. I just want to read through her email really quick for you. So Her email says, I've been thinking lately, wondering if our spirit babies have been incarnated before on earth. Have they lived past lives before or will this be their first time? I've also been wondering if new souls and spirits are still coming into existence or if every soul already exists and is simply reincarnated over and over. Dude, really cool questions. (laughs) And let me tell you, here's the short answer. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know. And I have thoughts on it. So that's what a podcast is for, right? Thoughts. Now, I should say, if this is your first time listening to this podcast, you'll know that I am very much grounded in evidence-based things. I like finding evidence. And that's why when I talk about these rather philosophical topics, I am looking for evidence that these things exist, that these things are true, that these things are real. And I find the evidence a lot. And so I can't deny it. Now, there are many things that I still don't know the answer to or if they're even real, but I still like to, you know, talk about them. I'd like to riff on them for a little bit. And so I will riff, even though I don't know. That's the short answer. This would be a very boring podcast episode if I just ended it there, right? (laughs) Okay. Now, even though I'm sciencey based, I'm a mental health practitioner, and so I look for evidence all over the place, um, and I find evidence all over the place for these very philosophical things, I still want to be able to, you know, hypothesize, right? Um, and a lot of what I hypothesize on is based on anecdotal evidence. So, and anecdotal evidence, by the way, the science community tends to like, I don't know, discount anecdotal evidence, but it's still evidence. It's still evidence that this shit is real. And so I, that use that as a baseline for when you, when you listen to my podcast, I encourage you to, um, listen to it with curiosity, open curiosity, and then go forth and do your own research, man. You know, do not take everything that I say as ultimate truth. I really encourage you to do your own research and, and then, you know, kind of divvy out like, uh, that I don't really like, that doesn't resonate with me. I don't really believe that, but this I totally do. And this over here, complete bullshit. (laughs) So please, I, it does not bother me at all. I feel like that is the beauty of humanity is for everybody to have their own opinions and thoughts. And that is the basis for gorgeous conversation. So what I'm going to say is based on anecdotal evidence with my own work, working with spirit babies. If you want to know, by the way, 
how I began working with spirit babies specifically go back to July, 2020, uh, when I quote came out as a spirit baby intuitive, um, I had been connecting with, uh, other realms, those who passed on and the spirit baby realm for many years, but I never, I was never serious about it. I just thought it was a fun party trick or something, but, um, I soon realized that it can be potentially even more healing, even though I can't claim it as is healing um, in any way. Um, but I found that people have very healing experiences through spirit baby work. So um, that's when I decided, okay, maybe I should freaking do this. <laughs> even though my fellow, my colleagues, my mental health colleagues are like, what the fuck are you doing, man? I cannot even believe this. She's gone nuts. Immediate diagnosis of psychosis. Um, no, hopefully not. Hopefully not. But, um, it's, it's not generally seen as, you know, so it's not something some people talk about at dinner parties all the time, you know, like, Oh, so how's that spirit baby work going? <laughs> A lot of people ask me that except people like you who are really interested in this topic. So yay, yay for you. And thank you for listening. <laughs> okay. Let's answer these questions. So this person says, I've been thinking about, um, have spirit babies incarnated before on earth. Um, now again, anecdotal evidence. Yes. Yes. They have incarnated before on earth through my own work with folks and other planets. Um, yeah, you want to get really like weird talk about <laughs> existence on other planets. Okay. Yeah. But her question was specifically about Earth. So let me let me talk to that. Yes. Yes. Um, what comes up in a spirit baby session a lot of times is one's connection with their spirit baby in former lives. And oftentimes there will be some kind of connection to their current life. Um, oh gosh, what happened uh, just yesterday? I was having a session with somebody and there she asked about a past life and... Oh yes. Okay. Right. So uh, not identifying anybody here, but I'm, so I'm just giving general information, but so you don't know who this is, but this person, um, had a past life with their spirit baby where they were both, uh, they were related, but not like siblings. They were like cousins or something. They were both female in that lifetime. And they were both, um, um, pioneers for women, for women's rights. And, how that resonated with this person's present life is that she's a huge person, like a feminist, you know, somebody who is all about supporting women and making sure that the glass ceiling is shattered and et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so this is an example of how a past life is very much related to present lives. If you don't know a lot about past life work, by the way, that to me, past life regression therapy is a beautiful bridge between science and spirit because it is this very, well, it used to be a very esoteric topic, but a lot more people are coming on board and realizing, oh, this isn't a real beautiful healing mechanism here. And I can actually say healing because that is what the research shows that past life regression, past life therapy is extremely healing. Uh, I have done podcast episodes on past life therapy, past life regression. So just do a quick search on my website, drmarierothenberger.com or on Apple or wherever it is that you're listening to this podcast, do a quick search. You'll be able to find podcast episodes on past life stuff. So I do do past life therapy as well, which is quite helpful with spirit babies, especially if you're struggling with fertility, we can uncover blocks, we can release blocks. It's a beautiful thing to do. Beautiful work. Um, if you aren't is interested in hiring a practitioner, it's not just me, right? There are plenty of people who do past life therapy. You can get um, past life therapy sessions at uh, my favorite, whom I was trained with, Dr. Brian Weiss. You can go to brianweiss.com and he has past life therapy audio um, sessions there. You can also go to YouTube. One of my favorites is by Brian Weiss. He was at the Omega Institute. Just look for the one that is without commercials. Otherwise it's pretty annoying. So there's that. All right. So, um, 
there are many times where I have done past life, excuse me, spirit baby work where past lives come into play. Um, and so I, the short answer, I guess here, this, that was a long winded answer. The short answer is yes, babies generally have incarnated before on earth. Um, then she says, have they lived past lives before or will this be their first time? Uh, no, right. So they've lived past lives before, generally speaking. Um, some of them, it might be their first time. I don't, that's not my experience working with, uh, souls, but it's entirely possible. Now, uh, I should say time is a funny thing. When I'm working with spirit babies, they're really clear. Like they, they don't, it's hard for them to communicate within the context of time because to them, it doesn't, it's not real. Time is a made up thing for us humans to be able to function well on earth. They, it's hard for them to talk about future, past, present, because to them, it's all now it's just happening right now. And so if to go even another step further, have they had past lives um, have they incarnated before? I would even say they've had future lives or they're going to have future lives. See, it's even hard for me to speak in future tense um, because they, they they have a hard time with the time thing. So lives are all happening at the same time. When I speak to spirit baby realm, that's what's um, that's what comes through loud and clear. Now, uh, you can look up quantum physics and, you know, quantum physicists and their take on this. Um, there are, I don't know, um, qualms even within quantum physics, you know, lots of folks have different theories and we don't, the, the short answer is, of course, we don't know uh, why certain things exist. But in my personal experience doing spirit baby work, yes, they've incarnated before. Yes, they will incarnate again. <clears throat> Another interesting thing that I've found, which is related, not part of the question that this person asked me, but it's very related. Souls tend to travel together. I've found they, they travel in soul groups. So the chances are that your spirit babies have incarnated specifically with you before or with family members before. Sometimes I'll do work with people where an ancestor will come through and they will either want to be the client's future child uh, or they are helping bring forth this future child or they've had a relation with the future child at some point in a past life and they're there to support them incarnating again. Um, and so it, it, it's likely that um, you will uh, have a baby that has incarnated with you in some lifetime before and with other parts of other members of your family. So we all tend to travel in these soul groups. Uh, the one that I was talking about from yesterday with the past life with the women's rights, that relationship has been going on for eons. And I said to this person, when this baby is born, it's going to feel like oh yeah, I know you, duh. Like, <laughs> of course you're here. It'll feel like this baby is so familiar. You'll just know them. And if you ever run into people in your everyday life that feels like that, like maybe you just met somebody, but they feel so familiar. It's probably because you've had a past life with them before. It's fascinating stuff. Completely fascinating. Uh, you might feel like that about your baby too. The Art of Being a Mum is the podcast where we hear from mothers who are artists and creators sharing their joys and issues around trying to be a mother and continue to make art. Regular topics include mum guilt, identity, the day-to-day -day juggle, mental health, the pros and cons and everything in between. Mothers from all kinds of art backgrounds and from all around the world. Episodes out each Friday. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so... Um the second question that this person said was, ha, um, have, or let's see, I'm wondering if new souls and spirits are still coming into existence or if every soul already exists and is simply reincarnated over and over. Okay, that one I haven't researched a whole lot. And in to be honest, in spirit baby work, that topic hasn't come up a whole lot. My sense is that it's both, that new souls and uh, new souls are, are, um, splitting off from the source all the time and they're reincarnated over and over and over again. I feel like it's 
both. Um, but that is not something that I have actually like looked into or researched and it hasn't come up in, in spirit baby work a whole lot. So I can't even use anecdotal evidence. So I really have to lean on the, I don't know answer to that one. And I really am super curious about it and want to now research it. And so I encourage you also to research it or, Hey, if you happen to know, about this, if you happen to have some knowledge or expertise even in this particular topic, I would love to hear from you and maybe even interview you if you'd be interested um, on the podcast. I think it would be a, an amazing, fun topic. So the bottom line is that the, the fact that I, well, I've found that the fact is when you are drawing in or pulling in a spirit baby into your energy field or into your potential future, they are probably um, souls that have incarnated with you before and they have probably incarnated in general before. Certainly they can incarnate without you being in their life too, um, but they probably have already incarnated before. Great fun question. Thank you for asking it. Okay. Now I can't end an episode without getting super practical. (laughs) This is my touristy self. Okay. I like to give you actionable things that you can do. And today I want to, of course, marry these two topics, past life regression and spirit baby. So Here's what I want to say about this. Okay. And you can even do a past life regression and ask specifically or set an intention specifically to connect to your spirit baby in this past life. Okay. So folks sometimes have a pretty big issue with past life stuff. And I just want to address this really quick. One, people, when they have an experience in past life, uh, hypnosis because it is hypnosis they will think it's not real or it's just their imagination or they're making it up in some way um, and it's not real well here's the thing I'm not going to tell you it's real because it doesn't freaking matter and I know that might sound bizarre (laughs) but here's the thing with past life regression Whether or not it's real does not matter as much. In fact, it doesn't matter at all when compared to the possible healing mechanism behind past life regression. If you have, this is what the science shows. Let me just back up. This is what the science, the research shows. Okay. And this is again where science meets spirit. Yay. The research shows that folks who have especially chronic conditions, chronic mental health conditions, especially, um, or even physical conditions will do the gamut in terms of treatment. They will do Western medicine, the Eastern medicine, energy medicine. They'll do all these things and shit just doesn't work. And so they were, they're just finding and flailing around trying to find something that'll work. They land on past life regression. They have a real memory or they have a memory, supposed memory, we'll do quote unquote, supposed memory (laughs) of a past life where this ailment was present. And then they will come out of this trance, out of this hypnotic trance, go about their day, and suddenly they're healed or on their way to healing. That is what the research has shown. That is not anecdotal. That is research sound research based. Do we know why? No, no. It's kind of like, why does acupuncture work? We don't know. I mean, there's some theories, but we technically don't know. That is the, that is the explanation or the experience of past life regression is that, you know, you could have a fertility block. This is my own experience. I had a block around being a parent and had a past life memory that created some healing in me once I remembered it. Um, I think I talk about this in my past life regression. Um, yes, I think I do talk about it in my past life regression therapy, uh, podcast episode. So do a search for that. Um, so that, that is what matters when it comes to past life 
memories, I happen to believe they're real. Well, shit, I'm just going to tell you what happened. Okay. I happen to believe they're real because of my own experience. And of course, other people's experience too. But here's the thing. When you have a past life memory, now with the internet and all that, you can verify a lot of information. So here's what happened. I had a a dream. It was a very intense dream. And here was the second tip that I was going to say. The first tip was go see a past life therapist or do a past life um, regression session on YouTube. Like I gave you those resources. Okay. Um, but what happened was I had this past life. I, I had a dream and that was the second tip. Pay attention to your dreams, especially really intense ones. This dream, I can still remember like now, and this happened, I don't, more than a decade ago, a long, long time ago, but I can still remember the details. And that was one of the things when I heard Dr. Weiss say that past life memories can come in dreams, that piqued my interest. I was fascinated by the topic before, but I wasn't like that interested in it, you know? But after that, I became really interested because what happened was I had this dream that was so intense. I wrote it down, but I still remember it. And because of the internet, I was able to research it because I, I had a feeling that I was a well-known person and it's not like Cleopatra or some, some, you know, super well-known person that a lot of people know about, but well-known enough that there would be documentation of this person's existence. So what I did was I got on the internet after I heard Brian Weiss say this, I got on the internet and started doing research. And I found someone whom I thought was the me that I had this memory of. The problem was Brian Weiss said to tune into the year or decade or, you know, century of that life and they didn't match. So I'm like, "Mm, it doesn't totally match. I believe when I tune into this person's year of live, you know, decade of living or excuse me, like 50 years of living. It doesn't feel right. So I kept going. Okay, fine. I kept going. I researched more, came across another person who matched exactly the years and the circumstance that I had this dream about. Okay, so coincidence, right? Okay, maybe it's a coincidence. Well, then (laughs) this still freaks me out. In this dream, I was on top of a certain kind of building and I can still see this building. So I'm doing this research still. I'm Dr. Googling, going, going down the rabbit hole and the fucking building, the picture of the building shows up on my Google search. I swear, I'd, I swear to God, that is what happened. So I'm looking at this picture of the building that I was standing on top of. I can point to exactly where I was standing on top of this building and I'm freaking out. Okay. So That to me was enough evidence that this is real. This person was completely random, but well-known enough to where there would be documentation. And I found evidence from my memory that this thing existed. So that's enough evidence for me. However, it doesn't freaking matter if it's real or not, because the goal of past life therapy regret or past life regression therapy is to create change in your present life. And I had plenty of change in my present life after remembering that this person, by the way, was not allowed to have children. And that was very much tied to my fertility issues. So suffice it to say, I do believe that past life memories are real. Um, but if you if you can't totally buy that, that is perfectly reasonable and fine, my love. You just hold on to your um, openness and, you know, manage that. The idea is for, you know, to create change in your present life. So tip number one, please see a practitioner if you would like to. Um, you can go to my website, drmariarothenberger.com, or just search for a past life regression therapist in your area. We can always do them online. Um, there are past life regression therapists that absolutely refuse. They don't feel like it's useful online. So that's completely fine too. Uh, but I, I do um, telehealth sessions all the time. I find them equally helpful. 
Um, and there are many other practitioners that also do past life therapy regression. Um, you can also ask your regressionist, by the way, or your therapist, by the way, to um, help you connect to your spirit baby in a past life. Um, that's another intention that you can have. Now, it doesn't always manifest exactly as you would want. You know, like the ideal would be, I go back into a memory and I'm able to see my child and hug my child and play with my child. Well, that's not always how it happens because what past life therapy regression is for is to create healing and, uh, um, uh, you know, a stillness or an, a joy in your present life a healing in your present life. So for example, I did a past life therapy regression with somebody who um, wanted to know about their spirit baby. And it turns out they had a spirit, uh, excuse me, a past life memory where um, they couldn't connect with any children at all. In fact, they weren't married or anything like that. They didn't have a partner. They were just by themselves. And there was a lot of messaging in that. Um, so we dug deeper and was very much tied to the spirit baby issue, but they didn't get to hug and squeeze and play with their child. Okay. So when you have an intention for what it is you hope to gain from a past life therapy regression session, even if it's spirit baby realm, it will likely be intended and there will be a spirit baby connection, but it might not look exactly like what you would expect. So please be open. If you do one of these sessions, just please be open to whatever comes through, write it down. A good therapist will also record it for you. And so you can listen to it later. Um, you should remember everything. Um, this isn't one of those things where you're just completely blacked out. It is, you're in fact, you're hyper aware. Um, you're just really, really relaxed. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful for you. And I do love when people send me their questions like this. So if you have any questions or ideas for topics for this podcast, I'd love to hear them. Hey, if you enjoy this podcast, by the way, please hit subscribe wherever you're listening to this. Leave a review, leave a few stars, maybe the max if, if you so choose. And a little write up would be wonderful too. I really appreciate you. Thank you. I wish you well. And I will see you next time. Take care. Take care.